It is March 4, 5 p.m. and the markets are closed. The Dow was up a thousand points. Bitcoin was up. Gold was down. Gold stocks was pretty much flat. I don't even know what to call it, but I'll talk a bit about it later. Um, so let's talk about the thousand point in the surge in the Dow. So what happened was Michael Bloomberg apparently dropped out of the race and he pretty much said, go with Joe Biden. And People were optimistic. The market was optimistic. People are like saying, ah, Joe Biden looks like he's going to become the nominee opposed to Bernie Sanders. I don't really know about that, to be honest. I, I don't want to give the counts. But as far as I know, people my age and under around millennials, 30s and unders, they're pretty much going to vote for Bernie Sanders. I mean, that's what I think anyways, because a lot of people I know, we grew up in a liberal type of school. And I actually, in fact, hadn't I started YouTube. I would have been in the same mentality as today. And not only that, you know, a lot of people in their 40s, in fact, or even 50s, because life has been very, very stressful. They they want more and Bernie Sanders can offer it. But I'm not going to give my opinion on it. I don't want to talk too much about it because now you're getting political and, you know, it is what it is. So anyways, I don't want to talk about that. So let's go to uh, what was that? Bitcoin and the Dow, I guess. So the Dow was up. Bitcoin was up. And I can't believe I have to go back to it. But the Dow was up because uh, Bernie Sanders had a less chance to win. And the pharmaceutical company as well as other, the, some of the other companies were rallying. Now, apparently, tech stocks, nothing really happened there. It was flat like gold. But it was up, right? Gold was down. The, the tech stocks were up. and But they weren't up by a lot, apparently. So, anyways, let's get out of the Dow because I, I don't want to talk too much about that. Okay, so let's go back to gold. Now, gold was down today, and, you know, by my voice, you probably think it's down by a lot. No, it's down by five bucks. But the gold stocks, I don't even know what to say for that. The thing is, what really bothered me today is I'm finding deals, right? I like to find deals. And it didn't even drop as much as I want so I could buy in, and it didn't go up as much as I want so I could sell. So I'm sitting there, like, we're in the middle, and I don't know what I should do. So I, today was a pretty boring day, other than replying to some of my fans on my other gaming channel where they're asking me, are you dead? I'm like, no, I'm not dead. I'm just busy making videos on this channel about finance, money, and economics. So, you know, other than doing that, that's what I did today. And I decided to bring in this uh, gold chart here. This is the gold chart from 2007 to 2008 and 2009. Actually, let's go back closer. Come on. All right. So anyways, this is 2007. So if you look at this, I don't know if this is the run up now or if this is the run up now, but I'm expecting, I hope anyways, it will go down here, which means from here, the high is a uh, nine, six, eight. So about $200 drop. So I'm hoping to see a $200 drop. If I do, I will probably load up. I mean, you'll, that's why I want some dry powder too. I'm trying to sell at highs and then wait. It might not even drop, but I'm not trying to sell all of my stock. So I'll keep some in for now. But this might not happen. And if you really look at the long term, right, the long term thing, if you look at the greater scheme of things, even if you did buy at the lows here, who the hell cares? Look at it. <laughs> I mean, even now it's higher than back then. So this is the during the recession, if you're, if you're wondering what I'm talking about. Obviously, everybody wants to buy at the absolute low, but nobody can buy at the absolute low. And if you do buy at the absolute low, that's an accident. So anyways, uh, that's what I was saying, you know, because it doesn't really matter when you want to buy it. But in the end, in the long term, it will be up. And let me just click this. Yeah, I mean, it's still there. I mean, you know, it's just the numbers a bit different. Interesting. All right. So anyways. Let's go back to the gold stocks. Nothing happened today. Literally, I was saying it didn't go up too much. It didn't go up, uh, go down too much. And then there wasn't really anything that happened. Especially when today, the bigger news for Canadians anyways, is the Bank of Canada cut rates by 50 basis points, just like the Fed yesterday. And I'm going to call it an emergency cut because I feel it's also an emergency cut. If you know Stephen Polos, I don't know him, but I've been following him for a very long while. I mean, he's an honest guy, right? As far as I can see. I mean, I could be completely wrong, but I agree with what he says. That's the problem. Usually I don't agree, but now I agree. So this is what bothers me because if I agree with him and he's still willing to cut rates and he's a stubborn guy, 
that means there's a huge problem. So, anyways, I was like thinking, why are you following the U.S. if you all like you pretty much never follow the U.S. right? Even though we do follow the U.S., uh, but he he hasn't followed for the past couple of years, and why is he cutting it in emergency right now? And at the same time, the they came out with a new mortgage stress test, right? Easier stress test. They're not, I mean, they dubbed it as uh, making it easier for people to get housing. No, I mean, I feel like they have, they feel there's a problem in the market, especially in the real estate market in Toronto and even the entire Canada, probably mostly in Toronto and Vancouver. So they feel there's a problem with the market and they need to cut rates to sustain it. So that's what I think. And then I was looking at the news right after, like, I think it was BNN or something. I don't remember, but, uh, they came out with saying the Fed cut rates, and then the next article after that was like Toronto housing prices up to nine hundred thousand dollars. I'm saying, I'm thinking, are you trying to like entice people to buy into a market because there's low in, lower interest rate now, easier mortgage rules, and higher prices? So that's the three things, right? So lower interest rate, easier mortgage <laughs> mortgage rules. And then you have uh, higher prices because that, that that makes people greedy, right? So that's what I'm thinking. And I'll give you my two cents on it. When people do something like that, I feel there's a bigger problem. I feel like they know there might be a huge problem and you're going to be the one holding the bag when the music stops. That's what I think. I could be completely wrong. Obviously, clearly, in the long, long term... Real estate will go up. I have no doubt about it. It will go up. Uh, but the the bigger problem is I want to get this into most millennials' I, mind before anything else. And even even some of the adults, you know, like my dad. I mean, my dad is a very poor guy, and he has ne- he you know he he basically can't take care of his children or the wife, and he's busy doing other things, right? And he never po- fa- uh, focused on studying economics or money. So that's exactly like all my friends. And yeah, he says, everybody says, real estate will always go up. I agree, real estate will always go up. Not always, actually. In the end, will go up. Yeah, I should say it in the end. All right, so in the end, will go up. But from A to B can be like 50 years, right? A to B can be like 30 years, okay? If not 50 years. And if you miss one mortgage payment, between now and 30 years from now, you're gonna lose your house. And what can guarantee you, especially if you're 30 and you're planning to borrow half a million or a million dollars, and then what can guarantee you that you're paying a million dollars for this house and your mortgage is around $5,000, you're thinking, oh, my wife makes 4,000, I make 3,000, we have a total of 7,000, We, you know, even though our mortgage is 5,000, we could make do with 2000 I mean, what if she just lose her job? Or what if you lose your job? Now you're down to 3000 and 4000 And then after tax and even property taxes and then fixing the toilet or the washroom or something. I mean, you don't have no savings. And not just that, right? If you miss a more like one single payment, you are going to lose your house. Unfortunately, that's just how it is. What do you want, right? So in between now and then, if you could sustain it, go in. But if you don't think you can stay stay in it, forget it. I mean, I think there would be a lower time where you could buy. I think the price will be lower. And I think the price will be lower because these people that have gone in. Because everybody's thinking, oh, they're going to print money anyways. And, you know, the, what is going to happen is that uh, the housing price is going to go up, right? Sure, that is true. But what if they don't print Right. Well, they they will print, but what if they print a bit later? And what happens is the prices go down. They only print when the house, the price go down. So what if you're part of the the, the herd that gets slaughtered? Right. So that, that is my real question to some of the people my age because if you can't support it, I think there might be a better time to do it because that 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 is has always happened throughout history. There's always better time to buy. Dot com bubble. I mean, my uncle. He made millions, and then when it fell, he lost millions. And the funny thing is, he sold it all, right? He sold it all, and then a few years later, it went up above the highs, right, of what he had, and then he was, like, kicking himself. 
And the same, I think the same thing is going to happen. I think they're going to flush out the first set of people. And then I think that would probably be the best time to buy. But unfortunately, a lot of people don't have the guts to do that, right? So they, they have to, uh, you know, buy whenever. But if you can support it, the mortgage, then do it. If you can't, I don't think you should do it. And I, even though I think there's a better time, but I am not recommending you or saying anything. I'm just giving you what I think. And I think that there will be a time, just like gold here, right? This is the major drop, actually, in the recession. That's why this thing is gray. You see here, right? This entire thing is gray because this is a drop. And this is not just a drop in gold. This is drop in everything. And I don't mean, like, just, like, the stock market. It was a drop in the real estate. It was drop in the stocks. It was drop in every single asset. People were trying to get money. But this time might be a bit different because... The thing is, they came out with a bail-in regime. So they're going to take the people's money in the bank first. So you got to really make your decision. It's really dangerous right now. I don't even know what to say other than think about it. I mean, I made my decision. I'm going to tell you what I did. I already bought my house, but I paid it. So I'm good. You know, I don't have a huge mortgage. And I have money to throw around, play around in the stock market. And, you know, it, it's good. I don't have to worry that I don't have enough money to pay the mortgage or the maintenance fee. And if you're buying a condo, that's even worse. I mean, the condo, the fees can go from $500, $600, $700 to $1,000. <laughs> and that's on, that's on top of your uh, on top of your mortgage. So I think there will be a time like this. And this is not the time right now. I wouldn't recommend it, even though they're cutting rates. Everybody's thinking, ah, oh, this is a good time. This is what the older folks said. Rates are low. You know, this is time to go in. I don't think so. I mean, I think that rates are low because they feel there's a problem. And if the problem didn't happen yet, that means it will happen. And why don't you just wait until the problem happens and then get it?